uh, last uh, presentation of the evening um, is about uh, comprehensive verification of MIPI sound wire master slave subsystem using a UBM based test suite. Um, the presenter is uh, um, Jitender Kushwaha from Synopsys um, and Analog Devices. Uh, Jatinder uh, is a Synopsys Verification IP staff R&D engineer and he's involved in UBM, OBM and VMM based verification IP development. He received his uh, degree in electronics engineering from Harcourt Butler Technological Institute, Kanpur, India and MBA from Georgia College and State University Milledgeville, Georgia. Please welcome Jatendra. Hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to discuss about comprehensive verification of MIPI Soundware Master Slip Subsystem using MIPI uh, Soundware Test Suite. So this is actually uh, uh, actual design verification of analog, analog devices uh, slave, IP, uh, slave IP with Synopsys uh, Soundwire test suite. So as you probably know, VP Soundwire is a fairly, um, you know, fairly easy protocol, but it, it has a lot of flexibility when you design systems. So this added flexibility adds challenges for the verification. So in this presentation, I will try to uh, cover some of those challenges which we faced uh, in this design verification and um, also give solutions for what, what solutions we came up with to deal with those challenges. So just to explain those challenges in detail, I have to go through a couple of slides uh, for MIPI Soundwire protocol overview and just to explain it better. So the agenda for today's uh, presentation would be uh, introduction of Soundwire, uh, the architecture of maybe Soundwire test suite, uh, verification challenges and their solutions, additional feature testing, and conclusions. So I'll just go, go through this uh, some of the features which are actually um, different from the legacy uh, sound protocols, which makes uh, Soundwise stand out uh, over uh, legacy standards. So Soundwise is a multi-drop dual data rate bus. As data is driven on every clock, so this dual data rate helps to reduce power consumption by over 40%. Soundwise just has one clock, but it can have any number of lanes. So that means the one clock is, uh, adds the robustness, and any number of lanes add scalability. And Soundwire transfer protocol is unified for any, any sort of uh, traffic, you know, for example, PCM or PDM or any other um, user-defined data. The, the protocol is same. So you can transmit any, anything over the same protocol. Uh, one other advantage of Soundwire is the, the commands are embedded inside the frame. So, uh, that means that you know there's no latency if you want to send something in between when the frame is going on you can it, it's periodic and so latency is very very low moreover you don't need any other additional uh, programming bus like i2c or spi it everything goes inside the frame and somewhere is very flexible in terms of designing any sort of uh, uh, any sort of topologies across you know mobile or related domain um, the, the possibilities are unlimited. I mean, you can design any sort of system with this, which is not possible with the legacy standards like I2S or uh, other, other sound like SG Audio. Um, and the major advantage of Soundwire is it's very, very simple to implement as far as the, the slave device is concerned. It's very, very small. It's uh, maybe around four or five K gates. So for a cost-effective solutions for a, for a microphone, it's, it's a very um, cost-effective and easy to implement solution. 
So the, this is one example I'm trying to give here. It's not a real system, it's just for the explanation purposes. Um, in this, um, uh, there's a, um, uh, this application processor which is connected to uh, six different slaves which uh, can have a uh, different kind of uh, audio traffic like PDM or, P or PCM and so uh, if this is a topology and the sound wireframe will look like this. So as you can see the PDM is mapped to uh, the first column and uh, the second this PDM is mapped to the this column and the PCM is uh, time multiplex based on their uh, frequencies. So I mean, it's just a representation of how easy it is to uh, uh, to map any of the topologies in a sound wire frame. And this frame is also flexible in size. So you can add more columns up to 12 and uh, you know, you can have uh, as many 256 rows. And the other important point is it, it goes with a command. So every frame has a command where you can send your user defined commands or any interrupts, anything else. So this was um, about SoundWire and the flexibility of SoundWire. So now I will uh, try to describe the, the verification environment. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm gonna describe how this synopsis test would look like when we uh, integrate it with a slave design. So the slave design is here, and rest of all, this is, um, uh, test suite environment. So typically test suite means it has a bunch of test cases and sequences. Those sequences runs on some sequencer, which in this case a soundware sequencer, it is um, same for master or slave. So for if you go see left hand side, so in this side we are attaching the design uh, with the application interface here. So from the test, it goes to the sequencer, sequencer provides the sequence item to the adapter. And this is the one piece which the user need to write based on their application interface because uh, that is not um, a standard. It, it, it could be a standard. If it is a standard, you can use another verification IP. But usually it is a proprietary bus, so we leave this as a empty wrapper here. Um, and uh, translation is uh, fairly simple because it's not a very complex um, complex protocol. So usually this bus is either a FIFO or maybe AHB or something like that. On the other side, with the same sequence, runs on this sequencer and which goes through um, uh, verific um, VIP uh, driver part and which drives the soundware interface which is connected to the slave RTL. So in a typical test, you will run some tests which will initiate traffic on, on a master which goes this way and if it is slave, it goes this way. So the, the beauty of this environment is if you just update this layer, which is simply translation of a transaction object into a bus functional model, you have everything ready-made for you. That means the monitor works like that. The test cases, all the test cases, you don't have to touch a single test case. All 100, 200 test cases, whatever you have, they work like that. And the scoreboarding also, uh, we have um, different hooks everywhere. It is from the bus. From, uh, from the active VIP component, passive VIP component, or from the adapter layer. So there's a, a lot of possibility. Whatever way you want to do scoreboard, you can do it. So, so far I've just given the introduction of uh, VP SoundWire protocol and uh, the solution synopsis is providing. Now I'll go in detail about uh, this particular verification which we did with analog devices. So this is uh, the data captured after this slide would be, um, some of this is a generic just to explain and some are a specific data from the project. Um, so first I'll list some of the challenges. Why I said that um, with this flexible topology, um, the verification is a challenge. What does it mean? So in a typical sound wire, uh, topology, you can have up to 11 slaves, which are connected to the same bus. Each slave can have 14 data port, and each data port can have one to eight channels. This is all virtual mapping. So in a, in a typical environment, when we're providing a solution which can work with any of the designs, it's really challenging. How you write a test kit which can work on five slaves, and that can also work on eight slaves, or maybe 10, 
right? So to, uh, to overcome that situation, we provide a class called link descriptor class. In this class, basically, you need to do a port to port um, connection. So that connection is done in this class. What you need to define is how many port to port connections you have. So you just define the port to port connection. For every port to port connection, you have to have one instance of this class. So let's say you have six different slaves which have 20 different ports connecting to different master to slave. You can just pick a pair, make instance of this class, and everything else, like all the test cases, configuration, sequences, everything will be randomized based on those settings. It will not generate any vague scenarios which does not exist. So you just need to make instance of this class, and that will take care of everything. And what it'll give you, it'll give you uh, scoreboards, which are device to device for command, because commands are from master to slave, or slave to master, or slave to slave. And port to port payload. This port could be master port or a slave port, because uh, data travels from port to port, not uh, I mean, from device to device as well, but it is meant to from one port to another port. So it'll generate that. So this is how um, a command scoreboard looks like. For example, in this case, we have one passive slave, two active slaves, which are connected to master. So in this case, we will have three different scoreboard, and that will display the statistics like, like this. How many compare or not, or mismatches or matches. In this case, all are matching. And the payload scoreboard, in this case, the slave uh, design had four ports. So uh, two ports are connected to the master on that side. And one port is uh, connected to slave one, other is connected to slave two. So based on this topology, we will have four different ports. And so we have four different uh, scoreboards. And again, it will do, display the statistics for all the um, relevant scoreboards. So we have another challenge, um, which is configurability. As each data port can operate at different audio frequency, as I showed in the earlier, um, the first diagram, if you remember, uh, there could be many different kind of, uh, kind of uh, ports, I mean, kind of devices like a PDM or PCM, which uh, operates on different frequency. You need to club those together, and you can only send in like one frame. It's always a frame, one frame. And whatever you have to send in that, inside that frame, you have to multiplex it. So if, if somebody has to write this test case, and you know, the, if your environment has like five different, uh, five different devices, and, uh, and you are trying different frequencies, it's like a nightmare. I mean, you, you have to visualize the frame in like two dimension, and then fit in your data there, right? So it's like a lot of work. So, uh, so half of the things were done by the link descriptor class, the, all the connection and everything, and the uh, rest of it will be done by our sequences, which will make sure that your data goes in the right place inside the frame, and everything is just box. You don't have to basically think about the way the traffic is going once you do the setting correctly. So yeah, so it also uh, take care, takes care of uh, simplified all the full data ports in a single frame. And um, this is an example of how you configure your, um, your devices. For example, in this case, there's a sync device which has three ports. Uh, so we basically provide a macro. That macro takes care of uh, the configuration and basically sets the configuration for that particular um, uh, port. So in this case, um, it's, it's, it's code taken from the example test bench. So here we are setting the port number and what kind of port it is and the other relevant uh, fields which are important for that uh, for that port. For, for example, fixed channel or mix, min or maximum word length, flow capability, sample rates, etc. So you have to basically do this. Everything else is done according to. I mean, all the test cases will be tuned according to that. So test case, if you are setting here zero. 3 and 4, your test kit will not generate a uh, test which is running on port number 1. But you did not test the test case, but test case understand if you set it correctly here. 
So, I mean, for as for any verification environment, right, the most challenging part is the debuggability. How easy you can debug. And in this particular test case, it's very fairly easy protocol, but what you see on the bus is like zeros and ones, which are also time interleaved, right? Every data is interleaved, and command is also mixed. So it's like really, no way you can make sense out of it. So the debug messages and other debug features are the only thing which will help you to do any sort of debugging. So um, in, in Soundware test suite, uh, Synopsis Soundware test suite, uh, we provide a bunch of uh, debug features like log file, trace files, and waves and protocol analysis. I'm gonna show you how those, how those looks like. So this is um, the log file, which is when you run any test case, you'll see this, the first thing. So it gives you a fair amount of idea what's going on, like uh, configuration is going on, or, or payload is sent from which port of which master or slave, and if the bank switching is going on. So this gives you a fair idea what's going on overall in the system, but really it cannot, you know, you cannot do debugging based on this. So to add more, um, like to give you more idea what's going on, every device, will have a trace file generated uh, for that device. And this trace file basically filters out all the messages for that particular device. For example, this is a master here. Um, so whatever commands or data or payload, right, which is going in and out of this master will be displayed here with all the other fields, or all the other relevant fields. So, and it also display, display the, you know, which device and port in case it is receiving it. So from which device it is coming, as you can see. So this is um, again a snapshot from an actual uh, log file, actual trace file, sorry. If uh, some people are very comfortable with waves, right, especially designers, so what you, what you can do with Soundware, just two, li two lines, right? So what we do is we added some high level signals, uh, high level abstraction signals, which is basically taken from inside the VIP, and we made them as a uh, interface signals. So you can see the internal states like row counter, column counter, column words, command types, or the current process, whether it's enumeration or the normal operation is going on, all those sort of stuff. So you know where you are in the frame, right? If you see the row, row, row and column count, you know where you are exactly. And, and then you see the commands. Okay, and this is a, a Synopsys proprietary technology called Protocol Analyzer. So in the soundware test, it comes with uh, Protocol Analyzer support. Um, this is um, like a graphical, timeline graphical viewer for the protocol transactions. What it means is it, and the vertically, the time goes from zero to whatever you run the simulation, and I'll, I'll tell you what kind of uh, packets are going on here in, in in terms of sound where it's always like a command or a payload and which direction it is. It is going from master to slave and this, uh, these are from slave to master. And the good thing about this one is uh, which the waveform cannot give you. For example, if you want to um, see the details about a particular transaction, if you just click on it, you will display all the fields related to that transactions here, which we cannot capture in um, the waveform. So this is the data generated by Android devices based on the verification they did using our uh, Soundware test suite. So overall, they, they ran uh, test suite, test cases as it is. Number of tests is about 2017. This is not the actual number. This is like based on the randomization and different, um, you know, we can pass the command line option to, uh, to force uh, the, the configuration, the test case configuration. So, uh, taking those into account, there are 2,070 test cases which were able to run, able to generate about 90% of the coverage. And then they needed something, some directed test cases to hit, uh, to make it 100%. And they wrote 485 test cases, and that made this 100%. Uh, both uh, the code and uh, functional coverage. So, overall, this project took about five months. So the day we gave them the release, it took them about approximately eight hours to start the first test case. That's the beauty of it. 
just eight hours, just integrate the design, are you able to run the first test case? Um, within two, point, uh, two and a half months, they were able to uh, get 90% of the coverage, which I showed in the earlier slide. And then they decided to you know, write the corner cases. So for the, for the corner cases also, we have a lot of um, basic sequences, very, very basic sequences that you can use as a building block to make your own test cases. So most of the test cases were written based on those building blocks and they were able to hit 100% coverage within five months time. So our test suite also provides a verification plan which is mapped to the specific specification section. And um, what does mean is, like if you have a hole, let's say if you, like in this case it's all 100%, but if you have a hole, if you have like a 90%, if you go and see that verification plan, which can be back annotated from the actual regression data, you will see which area actually is lacking and you can go and focus on that area, right, more test cases in that area. So as a snapshot, so our test suite was able to find 20 plus bugs in the design. And total 2,554 times they ran the regression. And actual test cases, the physical test cases were only 99, the 60 was provided from the test suite, and 39 was from the uh, corner cases. So they, this were able to generate about 2,500 different combinations because of randomization. So we don't have to write, physically write 2,500 test cases. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Any questions? The the one hundred percent coverage number was that cold coverage or, or was that like a functional coverage number? It was actually both. If you uh, see this. Uh, uh, this graph, right? Uh, here, this is the functional oh, coverage, and this that. is the code yeah. coverage. Okay, okay, okay. So they basically mix that and they make it a total coverage. And did you have to put many exceptions in, or? Sorry? What, what, did you have to add many exceptions to get the number up to 100, or? Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. Did you have to put any exceptions into, like, the DV environment to get that number up to 100, or was it, like, straight out of, out of the gate? Um, actually, this data is given. <laughs> to us by uh, analog devices. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I, I did not generate this data. Okay, thank you. Great. Uh, so for the test case, right, so when you count those uh, UN test case, are those UN test cases count as uh, direct test or, or random test? Mostly it is random. So how do you derive the 2000, 2000 number that uh, you, you see you have two, more than 2,000 test case? Can you come? Uh, so so you, have, you, you see you have two, more than 2,000 test case, right? So how, how do you derive that uh, the number? You, you have two, sorry, more than 2,000 test Directed case? Directed test cases? Yeah. So, sorry, I'm not able to really understand. So, so if you look at the slide, you, you, they say, you say, in the end, they say you have more than 2,000 test case. Right. So how do you derive that number? Okay, so there are some parameters you can uh, fix when you do the randomization. So for example, um, you, you want to fix the block count. So we provide the hooks. So when you run the test case, you provide the command line hook. Block count is fixed to zero. Then whatever random test will generate, always the block count will be zero. So like that, analog devices use different options to make different combinations. They want it to be certain, right? When you run it randomly, it may take days, but still you won't be able to hit something. They wanted to hit a particular thing, so they made different variation of our test cases by passing the command line arguments. So that's how they were able to generate uh, 2060 scenarios. Thank you. We have plenty of time for more questions. Okay, that was a quick one then. <laughs> Thank you everybody. Yeah, sure.